What's going on everyone? Ricky here at GSM Marina, and I hope that everybody watching is doing well and staying healthy. Even though we're all staying at home and staying inside, I'm still able to bring you all a review of the OnePlus 8 Pro. It starts at $899, which is pretty steep for a OnePlus phone, and it marks the company's entry into real flagship territory. But, 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 it's full of new features like wireless charging, it has one of the best displays on the market, and it has the new Snapdragon 865 with 5G support. So, let's get into it. With the OnePlus 8 Pro, the company introduces a couple of new changes to its brand identity. The branding on the back is now in all caps, while the number one in the logo has a slightly updated font. The phone itself doesn't look very different from the OnePlus 7 Pro, but there are some changes in its design. It does feel different in the hand since the tapered edges feel rounder than the 7 Pros, but in a good way. I feel like it's gotten curvier in the right places and it's more comfortable to hold. The camera setup is both wider and longer, and the camera bump does stick out much more than before because of that new camera sensor. So if you use this on a table, you'll definitely be rocking and rolling back and forth. The selfie camera is now in a punch hole, so it doesn't pop up as it did on the 7 Pro, which I'll kind of miss, it was pretty cool. Thanks to this though, the phone is now IP68 certified for water resistance. Now, I'm all about fancy finishes and flashy reflective glass, but the deep blue and soft matte finish makes this easily one of the nicest looking phones around. This one is called Ultramarine Blue, and when the light hits it, it almost looks like satin. The curved edges of the screen are deeper than before, which makes for a noticeable drop-off at the edges that wasn't really there on the 7 Pro. This doesn't really bother me as much as it might bother some of you guys. Can you see the slight distortion towards the very edges of the screen? I don't mind that the design looks the same as last year's. I think it's clever of OnePlus to use a design that's recognizable as its own and doesn't try to copy another brand. The screen on the 8 Pro is a 6.7 inch AMOLED screen with QHD plus resolution and a slightly taller 20 by 9 aspect ratio. This makes it exactly as wide as the 7 Pro, but just a little bit taller. This is the brightest display of any OnePlus phone, reaching a max of 888 nits in our tests. It's honestly one of the brightest displays I've ever used, and I've never had an issue trying to use the 8 Pro on a bright day. This display is also of the 120Hz variety. Just like Samsung's phones, system animations and supported games look silky smooth, and even if you're coming from the OnePlus 7 Pro's 90Hz screen, there's still a noticeable difference. It's not just bright and fast, but the 8 Pro screen has great color accuracy and a number of color profiles to choose from as well. It supports both DCI-P3 and sRGB as well, and I can honestly say this is one of the best screens I've used on a phone. I did have some issue with palm rejection at first, but OnePlus has managed to fix them quickly in the first wave of software updates, which you should see install themselves out of the box. The OnePlus 8 Pro has stereo speakers, which are plenty loud. If you want to use wired headphones though, make sure you have an adapter, since there isn't one included in the box. The 8 Pro runs Oxygen OS 10.5, which isn't a big jump from the previous version. It brings support for more apps in the dark theme and some slightly new system icons. But otherwise, it's pretty much exactly what I saw on the 7 Pro and the 7T. A lightly customized stock Android skin that's very fast and super responsive. OnePlus did promise that it would bring an always-on display option, but it's still being worked on and should come with a future update. It goes without saying that this will obviously have a slight impact on battery life. Speaking of battery life, the OnePlus 8 Pro has a 4510mAh battery, which isn't as beefy as we've seen on other phones like the Galaxy S20 Ultra 
or the LG V60, but it did do well enough in our endurance tests. It actually scored just as well as the 7 Pro did last year with 82 hours overall, with the default 120Hz refresh rate and an overall score of 91 was achieved when the screen was set to the industry standard 60 Hz. But that comes at the expense of the smooth experience that OnePlus intends. I can get a solid day and a half of battery life with the 8 Pro, but there are definitely other flagships with better battery life. What does make it worthwhile though is warp charge, which is very fast, and the charger brought the phone to 63% in half an hour. And if you decide to splurge 69 bucks, you can get a 50% charge in 30 minutes using the Warp Charge 30 wireless charger. On this charger, the phone warms up quite a bit, so it needs this active fan to blow air in through the back and up the back side of the 8 Pro to cool it down. I thought the fan was pretty quiet, but it might be distracting for some people. OnePlus added a bedtime schedule option in the power settings, so the fan doesn't come on when you recharge at night. Of course, this means you won't get those super fast charging speeds. As an added bonus, the 8 Pro can also share its charge with other Qi powered phones or accessories, so OnePlus really did wireless charging right the first time around. Inside, there's the latest Snapdragon 865 chipset paired with the X55 5G modem. But you should know that the 8 Pro won't be compatible with Verizon's millimeter wave 5G network. That'll only be possible with the OnePlus 8 non-Pro that's sold directly from Verizon. In my area, I only get T-Mobile's 600 megahertz 5G signal, which is cool because I see the 5G signal in the cluster, but it doesn't reach the really super high speeds that carriers have been promising us since 5G was first introduced. So now we're at the camera. The camera is one of the biggest areas of improvement over the OnePlus 7 Pro. The main sensor is a Sony IMX689, and it has 40% larger pixels than the main camera on the 7 Pro, which translates to better low-light performance and improved resolve details. This new sensor uses all-pixel omnidirectional autofocus, which makes focusing quicker and more accurate even in low-light. Next up, the ultra-wide camera now has the same sensor as the main cameras had on the 7 Pro and the 7T, so you can take full-resolution ultra-wide shots, and since it has autofocus, it doubles as a macro camera. Then there's the 8-megapixel telephoto camera, which is the same as it was on the 7 Pro. Same sensor, same aperture, no change there. And the fourth camera is something that OnePlus calls its color filter camera, and it's a quirky one. I'll show you that a little bit later. The 12 megapixel shots from the main camera are crisp and well detailed. Colors, though not true to life, are vivid but not too saturated. While white balance was spot on. Dynamic range is quite good too, but it tends to brighten up shadows more than in real life. It does do a good job of blending these exposures so they don't look artificial. With this larger sensor, there's a much more noticeable bokeh surrounding an object that's up close, which is something to keep in mind if you want to take a photo where everything is in focus. Ultra-wide shots match the main camera's dynamic range, colors, and white balance, but details are noticeably softer. Now, here are some macro samples shot from the same ultra-wide camera. The autofocus pulls in very close, so you can get up to three centimeters between you and the subject. Looking at these details and colors, they look almost unreal. You can get some really cool shots with this mode. As I mentioned earlier, the telephoto camera is exactly the same one from the 7 Pro, so it really works best in daylight. These are 8 megapixel photos, and their details look pretty good, but dynamic range is slightly different from the other cameras. I noticed that this camera lets shadows stay a bit darker, where the main camera would otherwise brighten them up. Photos from the main camera look good in low light, but there's a noticeable loss of details and sharpness. Nightscape mode restores much of those lost details with exposures that are both accurate and evenly blended in the shots. Honestly, it's hard to believe some of these were shot handheld. You can also use the ultra-wide camera to shoot nightscape photos, but they don't look as good as the main cameras. 
These are more hit or miss when it comes to nighttime photography. I'd actually recommend using a tripod for these. Portraits look convincing, and you can shoot them from either the telephoto camera or the main camera, but I prefer the ones that are zoomed in. Still, portraits with either camera are consistent with exposure, they have convincing bokeh separation, and most importantly, they capture my essence of beauty. <laughs> okay, moving on to selfies. The 8 Pro has the exact same selfie camera found in the 7 Pro's pop-up mechanism. And I liked that selfie camera. It took really nice shots, and the same can be said about the 8 Pro's. Selfies look great, and although it doesn't have autofocus, selfies are always in focus with softening applied to the right places. And like the main camera, the portrait bokeh is pretty convincing, as long as there's enough light. So remember I mentioned the 5 megapixel color filter camera? Well, first of all, it's buried in the camera's UI under the filters, and there's only one filter that activates it. Don't get me wrong, these shots are definitely interesting, and it really puts a twist on our perception of color, but I feel like people might find this interesting for maybe the first week or two, and then never use it again. Now, I could be wrong, but what breaks it for me is that most of the details are completely lost when shooting with this camera. Finally, we get to video. The 8 Pro can record 4K video at 60 frames per second with high levels of detail. Dynamic range and contrast are accurate with bright, vivid colors. There's a cinema 4K video mode which shoots a 21 by 9 crop of 4K video so that you can watch it on the entirety of the 8 Pro's screen, but it's a crop, so its vertical resolution is 1644 and not 2160. Super Stable Video uses the ultra-wide camera to better stabilize your shot, and it's been updated to shoot now in 4K, thanks to the updated 48 megapixel sensor behind the ultra-wide. OnePlus has evolved and matured over the past few years, and its visual brand identity is very well defined today. But OnePlus is no longer the company that disrupts and shakes up the phone industry that it once was. Today, there's a lot of competition from Chinese brands that really push smartphone value in the mid-range, and that's brands like Redmi, Realme, Poco, and IQ. But OnePlus doesn't really fall into that category anymore. The OnePlus 8 Pro is the most expensive phone that the company has made to date, and I find it interesting that OnePlus first emerged as the flagship killer and today, it's become the very thing that it set out to first disrupt. That said, the OnePlus 8 Pro is a very nice flagship done by the book. It's got all the flagship features like wireless charging, a large and bright 120Hz display, the latest processor from Qualcomm with 5G support, and a fairly nice all-around camera experience. I do have a couple of complaints, and the first one is battery life. Warp charge is fast and everything, but battery life is just good enough. Battery life is above average on the 8 Pro, but OnePlus isn't in the above average price range anymore. Step it up. Then there's the camera. I give OnePlus kudos for improving the camera this year with a larger sensor and the high resolution ultra wide, but I feel like the color filter camera is a throwaway and it only is really there so that OnePlus can say that it has four cameras. I give OnePlus credit for taking a risk, but I don't think it's one that's gonna pay off in the end. So the reason that you're all here is wondering, should you buy this phone? If you're coming from the OnePlus 7 Pro or the 7T, I would recommend you hold off on getting the 8 Pro. It's expensive starting at $899, and there's no rush right now to get a 5G phone, especially in the US since 5G is barely getting off the ground, and the benefit doesn't outweigh the cost. At least not yet, because 5G phones will eventually get cheaper, and 5G coverage will eventually become more abundant. Now, if you have an older phone like the OnePlus 6T, and you're not really fond of Samsung or Apple or the Google Pixel, but you still want a stock Android experience, I would say go with the 8 Pro. It's going to age very well. The screen is one of the nicest looking displays and the brightest that I've used. The performance is untouchable. 
software is buttery smooth out of the box and OnePlus is one of the top OEMs when it comes to monthly updates on time. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. With that, I'm Ricky signing off for GSM Arena and I'll see you guys next time.